day 71. No, we're not making breakfast food. We're going to be hashing and salting passwords. So one of the big issues we have when we store usernames and passwords in a database is what happens if a hacker gets into that database. It's all very well for them to have our usernames, but if they have our passwords as well, uh, they'll have full control over every account in our system. In fact, it's worse than that. Most people reuse passwords from site to site to site. So if I'm storing my passwords just as text and a hacker gets into my database, well, that user's accounts are probably compromised on dozens of sites across the internet. Rather than nagging our users to have better password management skills because we all know many people reuse passwords, what we need to do instead is do good practices with storing passwords. And the first thing to do is to hash that. What a hash is, is a way of turning any text into a number. Each piece of text will have a unique number associated with it, and that changes based on capitalization and spaces and all that sort of good stuff. And it's very easy to hash something in Python. Let's take a string like my password, which is baldy1. Now, if I print that out just as it is, it would print out baldy1. Now, if this was a data leak in a hack, my users are properly knackered because now all their passwords are sitting on a server somewhere for any Tom, Dick or Harry to try with your PayPal account, with your Amazon account, with your Apple account, whatever account you could think of. So let's see what happens when we actually hash that. So if I change it so the password becomes the hash of the password, what do I get instead? So I get this number. And if I run it again, I get that same number. Now let's change it just a little bit. Let's put a capital B in there. You'll notice the number's totally different and massively different actually. But if I run it again, I get that same number. So one good piece of advice is if you're storing a password, you should always store the hashed version. And this is very easy to achieve. Let's bring in our database to show you what I mean. I'm gonna bring in my Replit database and I'm going to create a username. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna set the database value for my username have password and that password is going to be the hashed password. So I'll run this just once and that will add it to my database. Now, if I want to print out the value of that, that is what is stored in my database, this number. Now, if a hacker gets that, well, what does that mean? I can't type that number in. If I take this number and I try and type that in, the hash of that number is a different number. So there's no way, if I know the hash value, to easily be able to get in to that database without knowing the result. So then all I do is I ask the user password and what I do is I do this, I hash that. And then I say, if my user's guess of the password is the same as my user's password that I've got stored, then print login successful. So let's see if this works. So it prompts me, so I'm just printing that out. It prompts me for my password, which should be baldy1 and it works fine. So what it's doing is it's comparing a hash versus a hash and they will match. This is brilliant, but there is a problem with this as well because although it's easy to go from text to the hash, it is very difficult to go from the hash back to text. So what some enterprising hackers have done is created a thing called rainbow tables. What they've done is they've hashed every word they can think of in every different length. So if you've got a standard password, like the name of a sports team, that hash is probably sitting online quite easily. So if I've downloaded the database and I've got the hash values, I can use a rainbow table to do a reverse lookup and get back to the original password. And that's not what we need. So one of the other things we can do is store salt. And salt is just a random value that's gonna be appended to the end of your password. So if my password is baldy1 and I've got a salt value of the random number then what i'm going to do is instead i'm going to make a new password which is going to be my password as it stands bind salt now if that salt is randomly generated for each user that means each user will have a different salt value now of course i'm going to hash that i'm just going to print that out for you so you can see what that looks like okay so we're getting the same value each time but let's think about user two now user two is going to have the password baldy1, but we're gonna have a differently generated salt number. These are generated uniquely for each user. They could even be their username added to the end. Watch what happens to them both. Notice they both have different hash values now because they are actually different passwords. So how do we deal with this then? Well, what we'd need to do is we'd need to store in the database both 
the hashed password and the salt. So I'm going to do that password by doing a dictionary, which is new password salt, which is the salt value. And to run that, that's going to add that to my database and I'm going to access that. So I'm going to say, ask my user for the password. Now, no matter what they type in, I need to load from my database now. So new password is going to be DB David. Salt is going to be equal to David. He's going to be equal to my record from the database and the salt value from that. My new password is going to be equal to an F string. The answer of the users typed in as a password plus the salt. And I'll need to hash that, of course. Now, if our new password, so that's the salt and hashed password, is the same as we'll print out login successful. So remember, even if a different user has the same password as me, they'll have a different hashed password result. So all D1 login successful. Now, the reason it's working is because it's pulling the salt out of the table, gluing it together, and those hash values should be the same. This is a really, really neat way of having unique values. And all you'd need to do when you created a new user was randomly generate a salt value. And of course, you could do that by importing the random library and generating that for each user. As long as you stored that in the database for each user, it'd be very, very easy to pull that back in. So if a hacker does download your database, the hash results are going to be pretty meaningless to them because using a rainbow table, it's very unlikely that they would have calculated every normal word with a random number stuck on the end. So we more or less made our code impenetrable to hackers here. Common problems. There aren't very many common problems with this. The main problem with this is actually not storing the hash value or not comparing the hash value. Let me show you what I mean. If in this entire thing, I generated the new password, but instead just did this, there's no way for me to get in. Even if I put my password in as baldy1, it ain't gonna work because what's saved in the database is the salted and hashed version. The main error that you can deal with in this is going to all that effort to create your salt and your hash and then coming out the other end with comparing it to the original inputs. There's another issue as well though, and that's this. Code looks good. Not working though. Why? Well, the problem this time is my code to create the new password has my salt and my password the wrong way around. So I need to make sure they're the same. The creation of my password before it goes into the database as a salted and hashed version needs to happen in the same way when I'm creating that again to compare it to the database. If I'm not using the same steps, things are gonna go wrong. I've broken some code, so please fix that for me, pretty please. Your challenge today is to build a simple login system. I would like a menu to pop up with the ability to add a user. For the user, you're gonna ask for their username and their password. You're going to create a new password with a salt that is a randomly generated four digit number. You're gonna add that to the end of the password and hash that entire thing. You're gonna store that in a REPL DB with the key as the username. The other option on the menu will be to log in. Login offers the option to type in a username and password. And if the username and password are correct, we'll just display a message saying you have logged in successfully. This should work with multiple users. When you're done, share your work with us by publishing it in the Replit community and by using the hashtag Replit 100 days of code when you share it on social media. Tomorrow, we'll be going back to that private diary program you made and making it actually private.